Women Matters, we are meeting on the 1st of January 2024. It's incredible. <laughs> Happy New Year again to all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. So we are now Europe, after Africa, and uh, California. No, you are not in California. You are on the other side of the <clears throat> Christine, no? I'm in North, I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, yeah. Africa, Europe, and America. So three continents. Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. And I, I was just listening to the uh, Symphony of Anthony Tworczak uh, of the New World. And that's you who are in the new world. I'm in the old world. Hanali is in a, I don't know what world is that, a middle world. <laughs> it's the underworld. <laughs> How funny. So let's do a check in and uh, then we see where we go from here. <laughs> I, will well, I, will, I will go first. Um, I'm Christine in Carlsbad, California, and I'm. I don't know why, but I feel very hopeful about 2024. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it at our last meeting that my daughter, Adrian got engaged. Did I tell you guys that? Did I say that? No. Okay. So uh, she's been dating this fellow Nick for five years and he proposed uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, should be fun. And uh um, of course, this is a big year because it's a presidential election and it will probably drive us all crazy in the next 11 months um, to go through that process. It's already crazy, but uh, hoping that we can get rid of Trump for good and not have to hear from him again. <laughs> um and personally, I've started the process. I told you guys I was winding down or reducing my hours. So uh, this week will be the first week where I'm I'm going to work less. And uh, I'm not trying to fill up that time right away. Um, the only thing I've promised myself to do is to try yoga. So I would like to do some yoga. Um and we'll add that to the things that I already do for exercise, but I'm not going to make any big plans at this point. I feel like I just need to kind of sit with things, see how things feel, see how much time I really do have that's extra. Um, I'm not good at relaxing, so I'm not the type of person just to kind of sit down in the middle of the day <laughs> and take a breath. So I tend to keep myself going. Um, but I am looking forward to just what probably will be a, a better uh, change of pace, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's going to be very good. I'm looking forward to that, and yeah, I'm I'm hopeful, happy about the new year. Just hoping everybody stays healthy for the entirety of this year. So I will pass on to Christine in North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm. What I have that's in common with you, I'm Chris, Oh, who I am. I'm Christy King. I'm in North Carolina. I um, live on a farm, seven acres down to a creek. And it's very beautiful this time. You know, it's just sparkling right now because there, there's a lot of dew and moisture outside. The sun is, and it's, it's gorgeous. Um, In a way, I've got something very much in common with you, Christine, and that is that I just I've just finished a number of things, and I'm I'm watching myself with a little bit of objectivity, like where do I want to go, and I'm not trying to push it. I'm curious about a variety of things, and I'm just the way I know if I'm on track that's healthy for me. I get visceral sense. It's gut stuff and heart. It's very body centered, so my brain doesn't have to make these decisions. I can tell in my life. if I feel what I call it the chill feeling. I know it sounds like a little child, and it is sort of innocent, like a child saying, Yes, go down this path. And I'm trying to just give them space to be able to really listen to that. And I love that I have that. I, I try to tell other people about it, and they go, I don't, you don't know what you're talking about. 
and um, that's unfortunate, but that's okay. It's the way my world is, and I'm that's it. Um, and I'm just noticing how each day is kind of fresh, and um, I'm happy about that. Yeah. And I've got a slight distraction. I wish one of us was a nurse. Can you see this thing mm -hmm. that's happening here? Yeah. It it tore the superficial part of my skin and then I bandaged it up and I put an antibiotic on it. It's just, if it looks like I'm distracted, it's sort of there because it hurts a lot. And then I'd find the tube that had the antibiotic in it and it said, Notice if you happen to maybe be allergic to one of these. And I thought, oh, maybe that's why it's not doing very well. So I just finished washing it off. With, when did you, um, when did that happen? Was it recent? Thanks for asking. I think it was about, it was stages. It was a small one about a week ago. And then oh. I accidentally hit it against something else and it opened up and so I did a lot of stuff to wrap it to protect it, and um, and the antibiotic on it, and wrapped it up with gauze, and then it really started to itch and bother me. So if anybody has in instincts about that, I'm not a good nurse. I don't I don't know what the heck is going. On. And we have in the United States we have something called urgent care. It has to be very close. So I'm debating about whether or not to go. It's it's not like an ER. Situation, but you go when you feel like somebody's got to look at this. So, yeah. so are you putting Neosporin on it? Is that what you mean by an antibiotic no, ointment? It, it's a particular antibiotic. It's got three different antibiotics in the tube. Mm -hmm. It's not in front of me right now, but I think that's one of them. And there are two others. And mm -hmm. I can't usually take oral antibiotics. I'm just real sensitive to it. So all of a sudden it just danged on my head. I thought, you know, that. And I looked to see if there was a date on it, there was a date, but I'm just, I'm noticing that maybe it's better just to give it in the air. Yeah, any... except, except you have to protect it. So you can leave it in the air as long as you're not going to bump your arm into anything or put oh. a sleeve on it to protect it. Um, otherwise you should cover it if you're going to keep exposing it to water or bumping into things. Um, okay. You can always put a little, uh, a small amount of Vaseline, which will not be an antibiotic, but if you're putting gauze on top of it and you want to make sure it doesn't stick, you could put a little Vaseline. Okay. And just keep it kind of really loose so it can get some air. Yeah. Cause it's not, yeah, okay. Yeah, that you can leave it open to the air if, uh, again, and you can leave it open as long as you're not gonna be Aggravating well, it. I'm real aware of it now. It yes. Very much so. So thank you. That's very helpful. Okay. I don't have much common sense. <laughs> okay. Hey, yes. Passing. Hi, baby. Are you coming? Are you going? Mm, I'll go. <laughs> thank you, Christine, and other Christine, for sharing that. Um. I've got this little dog here on the right of me, passionately eating his bone. So if you hear this, these sounds, it's him. And his passion just reminds me of what I thought about this morning, about the new year, that every day is new. It's not just a year, you know, every day. And the sun, I was just reminded again about the sun. Even though we might not be able to see wherever we are, that it brings the new day regardless. And every day is fresh. And we have these, and I thought about this thing that we have, are looking at a period, and then, but it's hardly impossible to really keep up with something the whole year, you know, because there's so much stuff that happens that we don't have any control over. And then maybe lost less strenuous just to focus on each day and live each day to the fullest, and whatever that means. And like you said, Christine West, that. You don't have any specific plans and things. That's wonderful because it's what whatever is emerging. So when you shared about that, I had the same feeling of being in the flow and whatever emerges, attend to that and flow with that. Instead of having all these plans and then things happen 
along the way that we can't control and then we're so disappointed and the likes. So that was, I just wanted to reflect back from what you said and shared yourselves. Now, I'm in Cape Town, Hanali, and <clears throat> we had a very hot day. Um, yeah, I went to visit my elder brother two days ago in a small town up the coast. It was wonderful to see them because they, they live in another province and they've got a place there at the ocean. It was also just lovely to see them again. They're much older than me. And um, yeah, it's also to be with them while they're still here and that sense of togetherness, which was really beautiful. Um, and I shared with the other ladies, Heidi, I found this thing of Paolo Kulu yesterday about closing cycles. And it's just the most beautiful piece that he's written about um, everything needs to come to an end. And it was just so beautifully written that really stayed with me the last two days of um, that everything has a stage, that, that that stage must come to an end. And if we don't get attached to things, you know, what else is impossible because we don't get attached to something specifically, which I think what you, Christine, were shared is coming to the same theme of just being with whatever is in front of us and sit with ourselves as well. And for now, I'm complete my pass to Heidi. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So when you say every, that's a circles in circles, I, I have to share that um, it was very obvious to me that the circle was finished because about three or four days after Mark died, I found a little cat in the in a bar here in the in the excavation area, and it couldn't eat. It uh, had the, the jaw, it was broken. So I brought it to the veterinarian and she succeeded to, to fix the jaw in a way that he could eat. It was very little like this, you know. And um, uh, and also the tail was uh, had to be cut because there was obviously a cow which uh, hurt it. And this cat about two weeks ago, I don't know if we met since then, uh, I found him that he couldn't eat. And he had a big bump here under under the the tongue and he couldn't move the tongue. So I brought him to the vet and she made an um she wanted to find out if it's cancer and so she had some he had some uh, suffering, you know, and he gave me antibiotics and I should give it to him. No having nobody to hold him, I tried to give him the injections and the next day, and he was sort of frightened, really. And uh, I tried then with other people help and so on. And when I came back, uh, he was in the house. When I came back in the house, he passed the door like a dot, pew, and I couldn't hold him anymore. And he never came back. So I thought he started life with not being able to eat and he finished life. He could have survived because the result was it was not cancer. So it could have been treated, but he obviously didn't want to. And I found it, I thought, things happen in this way. So as for me, um, I'm quite fine, especially when there are good days, because then I go out and prune the olive trees, which I love to do. So every day, two hours, more or less, and being out in the air. Now that was two days of gray, and mm, I didn't really do anything. So I feel like, oh, uh, <laughs> I heard there is so much sun energy around. Uh, so that might be, you are talking about next year, what is coming. I think there is a lot of energies moving and somebody said in one of these channels that also brings sort of mood changes and so on. And I just had it. But when then I say I, I hear this beautiful music, you know, I'm sort of intrigued. But also there, I, I, I feel like in a flow, even in the moments when I feel. Uh, <laughs> uh, and there are moments in which I don't know in which reality I live. <laughs> <laughs> there seem to be many realities. Now I'm listening, I'm reading 
uh, to a book from a certain scientist. He's, I think he's dead now, I don't know. About 40 years ago, he wrote the book, The Deep uh, Hot Biosphere, where he is talking about life in the, in the depths underneath the, uh, the oceans where you wouldn't expect it and uh, how the co carbon and uh, oxygen and these things and the photosynthesis might not be the first um, the first reason for for life and so and that is so exciting but at the same time it's overwhelming uh, to to read this but i'm so interested in different approaches in different ideas how world is working how we are working so i was reading this also before and also in little pieces because otherwise I can't, I can't get it, it's too much. Anyway, I'm happy that we have arrived in this year and I'm both, I'm hopeful for the year that something will really big will happen. And I'm also thinking uh, there are many things which will come uh, the way which are not very pleasant. So, but in, in ways of, uh, Going ahead, yeah, I think something will happen towards the truth uh, and towards a better world, a clearer world where, where things come out how uh, which were hidden so far, and yeah, and so I'm getting informed in many many ways. I before I listened to a podcast of a person who was at the conference in Stanford, which was about uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, about the, the 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 new technology uh, which they brought, and so I'm, you know, I'm in this sort of world to explore what what else <laughs> might happen in the future, and I'm very curious, also about the dreams. Some nice dreams or not so nice dreams depends uh, came up in these days. You know uh, how are they called in German? Raunächte. These are the nights between Christmas and the 6th of where you should mm -hmm. remember your dreams uh, because they have some certain qualities. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so I'm in a sort of, hmm, I don't know what to say in such a word. How, how do you call this? A bit uh, su suspended in some way. No, but still quite... <laughs> Uh, grounded. That's not that I'm flying away, but it's an exploration and uh, I'm excited about that. Anyway, so that's me. <laughs> what Could I ask you what was the name of the podcast again? And um, I Austria? can, it, it was in German, but it's oh, for sure oh, okay. it's also in, 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 in English something because okay. the conference in Stanford was in English. They were, you know, Okay, I can just put that in, and it'll probably mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. Was it was it Sean Esbjorn Hardin? No, 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 it was not, no, not Sean. Sean. Okay. He is working on that, so yes. yeah. So uh, you might find something about this with him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. And what what came out is uh, he was also doing an interview with a physicist um, uh, that. Our world is three-dimensional, plus time is four-dimensional, but probably we are living in six dimensions and we cannot see the other. And so what we call extraterrestrials may, may be people in this who are living in the six other, no, in more dimensions, and we are more limited in perceiving this. So so many, many ideas which are worth to consider. I don't want to believe neither one nor the other, but it's just opening opening the area of considerations. Maybe, maybe not, maybe this, maybe that, maybe all of it, no? As in integral, we say, <laughs> nobody has the full truth, but um, everybody has a piece of the truth. So I'm glad that we can learn always more and more. I love knowing that about you. I've never heard you discuss, you know, I, although I've missed many, many sessions for sure, but that there's interests that you have, so many things that you're excited about. I'm just curious with one question. As you 
live on your own? Are there people you where you can talk to them about the thing you're excited about that you're reading? You do have that in your life? With some people, yes. With different people on different topics, let's say. Yeah, yeah. so you have you have those resources. Not in my yeah. life, but on internet. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Zoom, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's yeah. in my life, you know, because nowadays life is not only the physical life, but it's also this. Yeah, I mean, now you're talking up my alley <laughs> about the other dimensions that we cannot perceive yet. And that and there has been research done a long time ago about that there are actually 22 dimensions. And so it's all scientifically proven, if you want to call it like that. And I've also always been curious about, um, not my own perceptions alone, but where are we heading as humanity? We've been able to perceive these other, and experience these other di uh, realities and the parts of our bodies that are busy uh, being activated, so to speak. It's already there, it just needs to be activated. It's like when the primitive brain was there and then the limbic brain was activated and then the new cortex and the prefrontal lobe. The, and now these, and the, um, this, they just discovered another organ um, called the institium that keeps everything together. And we didn't know about it 10 years ago. We didn't know about five years ago. So there's lots of stuff happening. And I call it the human technology that's being dis dis um, discovered. And not only tech as we know it in terms of you know, devices and, and internet and the likes. So our human technology has been rapidly evolving in the last three, four decades from what we understand and know. So I'm excited about that. What's, where, where is this heading? What, how, how, what else will we be able to experience and perceive? And what can we do with it? Why is it there? What's the purpose of it? So I'm really, and I also saw where my friends where I stay, they, the one uh, friend, he's really um, into the, watching things like e AR extraterrestrial stuff. And he's also watched a few things in the last two weeks about uh, similar things like you described, Heidi. And then, and he's still very pessimistic, but he's curious. So he would ask me whether I think of these things that he's watching and the likes. So that excites me that people like him who's usually, who used to be very left brain orientated are asking questions about these things and are watching it actually, taking the time to watch it. That by itself says to me, there's a shift happening. And to us, it might seem slow, but I don't think it's really slow, it's happening. And what you say about human technology, what I'm very much also I'm interested there is a German professor for psycho psychoneuroimmunology. So the connections between spirituality, sociality, uh, so, so, sociology, and body and body, mind, and all, all the other things around, how much they are connected. I mean, we know from some spirituality, the spontaneous healing of cancer and things like this, you know? And uh, people seem to have found out, these people, that um, the body in certain conditions can self-regulate when you, you know, in, in the spiritual realm. But maybe it's not only spiritual, maybe it's also in integral, we would say, in connection. No? If, you, if you, you lack certain substances in your body or in your brain, some things cannot cannot work well and so you know so that's for me it's very interesting to see how things come together and what can I do for myself to to better certain things not only on the physical um, part but also on the um, on the mental which I think still is difficult now to let go of certain um concepts or, or ways of thinking or ways of believing and of trying to distanciate yourself and the things get difficult and things like that. So I'm observing all these things and I find it very, 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 very exciting <laughs> and difficult. Yeah, I think that's a good 
Um, Hanali, would you put in the chat that new thing that they discovered? Yeah, I will. I just want to get the right spelling for you. So I'm wondering, Christine, Christine Baza, uh, now when you have more time and you say you need to keep yourself going, uh, what do you think you will, <laughs> which projects will you, I mean, not, not that I expect you to know the projects, but in what direction do you want to go? Uh, I, I, I'm curious about spiritual things, although, you know, for me, that boils down to either doing things in person, which I have trouble motivating myself to do, um, preferably doing things in person. I guess I could do them online, but I think it's better on in person. Um, yeah, and maybe some things online. So spirituality, uh, I have some ambitious thoughts about doing volunteer work um ambitious because I would have to learn a lot of stuff to do this particular thing that I'm interested in. Uh so I don't know if I'm gonna do that. It it would be a lot to bite off. Um that's why I'm giving it time to just kind of settle. So and piano. Um <laughs> piano. I uh I'm delving into that more. YouTube is very helpful and I, I have a teacher. So um learning from him and trying to um, accentuate that on my own through things on the web. Yeah. That's probably the easiest thing for mm -hmm. me to, to um, do. Do you know that probably this year there will be an integral conference in South Africa again? Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Erika told me that oh. they're planning to do it. I don't think I can come. But I just I say it also to to Christine because she is a eager integral conference uh, <laughs> visitor. So, well, are you sure it's going to be a, it's going to be in South Africa, for sure? Yeah. It it I, it was already in in twenty nineteen where I went, and it was really good. I really loved it. It was in Johannesburg, and we also visited Cape Town. But Hanali, we didn't meet then. So, well, the reason I ask is that um, Tom is uh, spearheading with with some other people on his committee a North American um, conference, and he's been in touch with Rika. So yeah. when she mentioned it, I don't know if she meant when she mentioned this conference. It's going to be in May, but it's going to be in Denver, Colorado. I think she said, uh, no, I, I will figure it out. I have understood yeah, yeah. that they are planning for South Africa because They're otherwise that yeah. I would go to America. I don't think she would tell me. Anyway, it's the same. Yeah, she's been, I don't know what conversation Tom and Rika have had, but I know they've been in contact about it. They're mm -hmm. uh, They're trying to do a North American conference in the years opposite IEC. Mm -hmm. okay so we'll see um it's a lot of work a lot of work wow yeah, yeah but, i just checked the facebook page but i can't see anything yet yeah no no they are planning that is not yet published for sure okay i can i can get back to her and ask her but i i would yeah. love to come back to south africa because it was really a, a huge experience and um but you should come you should come if it happens you can come to me <laughs> yeah. There are many, many reasons why it won't be possible, probably. <laughs> but you see, it's easier for you to travel here than for me to you. That's true. That's, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I also seen in other groups that I belong to, um, I'm not really active in them, but I've also seen that they suddenly uh, integral burst happening in them as well, which before I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why Rika also even think, considering it perhaps, because suddenly there is a boom in the African continent 
about it that hasn't been there before. Good. But you know, you talk about, I was just telling you about the interstitium, <clears throat> but the other thing that I came across end of last year, they are difficult to speak about last year because it's like <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> was um, about this medical doctor, a realistic doctor in the USA um, who works with a cerebr cerebral spinal fluid and it's connected to our soul. He believes he's proven or he's busy proving that our soul resides in our cerebral um, fluid. And his research is just fascinating. And the other lady he had a podcast with a lady who actually brought in astrology into it as well. It was amazing. It was really, you would never put the two, the two together at all. And, you know, um, it was just fascinating about what she discovered. And she discovered it accidentally. It wasn't something that she that she were even in, she was even interested in before. But there's three days of the of the month that we are highly perceptive to external in, uh, energies. But during those days, so you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't have sex, and you shouldn't drink alcohol at all. Um, but it's just fascinating. You can work it out according to astrology. And then when she discovered she was really ill, and um, so bad that she had to leave her job. And then she had discovered by accident this whole system of the three-day thing and how she was able to connect her spinal fluid and she, she healed her, so also self-healing. It was just fascinating. And he's now trying to get her some, he's in Pasadena. He's trying to get her funding to go deeper into this. But it's, there are fascinating things happening. I th what I'm, from what you shared, Heidi, that, that really excites me as well, is people begin to connect dots between things I didn't do before. And I think that's where we are heading. It's combining things that didn't necessarily fit together before. We thought that they didn't fit together, but suddenly it all makes sense and we discover amazing things. Where before it was very reductionist, looking at things in a linear way, separate, it's separate in isolation from each other, even like the world events now. And I think Heidi, you spoke about last time as well, that suddenly we can begin to connect the dots between events where before we, we, we were not able to do it, but now we have all the information, access to it to do that. But the same happens with our human technology as well. We begin to be able to connect the dots and put things together which we before put separate or looked at it separately. And we start to see new things which we didn't see before. No? And other things which some people saw already and we thought, oh, they are crazy. We, we start to think, oh, maybe they are not so crazy. Let's try it out. Though the taboos are somehow breaking, you know, that they, no, don't touch this because it's crazy. No, ma, try it, try, let's see what, what there is on. So there is more courage to go into unknown territory, in my opinion. At least I see it with me, but I see it also with other people. So we are not so conservative anymore in what other people tell us that that's like this and don't ask other <laughs> for other explanations. And then we say, no, let's see, can be some other thing, no? And and the connection, that's, that's true. You, you never thought that things, this and this is together, they were separate. I mean, we are still living in a society where separate knowledge, no? Science is uh, compartmentalizing, but it's beginning to, no? To, to connect a little bit. So in this sense, I'm very hopeful. Yeah. Also art, that art becomes integrated into, into a ne as a necessity in life, beauty and everything, which we have neglected for so long. Just... And for me personally, I was really struggling this past year because I wasn't in the environment I always had beauty around me. Suddenly I wasn't in an environment like that. And the effect on my life was incredible. My own well-being, my mental health, everything. It was it was just, um, it was like bomb shock. Hmm. And so I also agree with you, Heidi, with beauty and becoming, not to forget that doesn't matter what happens in our world, that might seem very distraught, distraught us and things like that. But I, th I see it as a distraction to keep us away from the beauty and 
the mystery and the yeah you know, the wonder of life itself. Sorry, Christine, I know you wanted to speak. Me? Me? It interesting pick that up because I didn't realize I'd made a signal of any kind. <laughs> it's so sweet. Thank you. No, I was just thinking about how I'm um coming rely on my experiences in nature that I've had and that becomes much more important. And I live close to some amazing forest area. And I was remembering one of the most powerful experiences I had. And I, very often I cannot tell anybody about it because they just know that I'm crazy. Not just think I'm crazy. They know that I'm crazy. <laughs> and I was lying down on the earth and no one, no, I don't run into people in the forest where I live, you know. So I was just feeling for like an hour or so. And then all of a sudden I heard you talk to me. And then said, um, you are not important. You are not important. You are unconditionally loved. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just like that. And I usually don't take paper and pen with me, but I wrote some things down at that time and shared it with some. The important part is interesting. I think when we are important, then we're all about our personality and what we do. But feeling unconditional love all the time, what's, what could be even sweeter than that? And some of the recent research that's been coming up in Harvard and also I think in Yale, that um, there's a swing research in terms of happiness but what seems to be the underbelly of the happiness is love, which is um, kind of goes back to what I had earlier before you were here, Heidi, that's like loving presence comes from these qualities of gratitude, compassion, and awe. So there, there's all this positive energy around that I hope can Help us ride this year with the most um, spiritual and physical health. So thank you for I, what you <laughs> I was thinking as you were saying that, is that you that you are unconditionally loved or you are unconditional love? Because yes. I was curious when you said uh, I that you experienced you're unconditionally loved like then love is a verb and who's doing the loving like who when you imagine that who is giving you that love or what is giving you that love i don't know what, did you have a thought about that I think the way you put that i think it has to come from outside and inside both mm. energy around us as well as what we've got inside of ourselves our capacity for unconditional love mm -hmm. That, does that make sense? Yeah. I was just curious if you had any sense of where, if you're receiving it. Yeah. Do you think it, you mentioned energy. Do you have any other thoughts about that? Or does anybody else have thoughts about that? I haven't felt safe to share it with too many people. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people have just related to it and liked it. Mm -hmm. But um I like I love the questions that you're asking, and it it's been a while since I experienced. So I think what I want to do is kind of reconnect with it, thanks to your questions, to really what what is going on there, and how can I um, hold more space for it to inform me? Yeah, because your your poster suggests that you are the one giving the unconditional love you know it, it is a gift from you but you're also talking about you know hearing the message that you are unconditionally loved which means you're receiving so it's a, obviously a two-way street but uh i don't know it's interesting no i think that that's right mm -hmm. it's just what what we find almost like this cerebral um liquid and 
I'm not, I'm not using the term correctly, but. Cerebrospinal it, it, fluid? Yes, thank you. That it might, it might hold all that energy in it for us. Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. I think that definitely helps us be much more present when I think about it, right? It just runs every place in us. So yes, lots of new, like you, Christine, I'm just kind of open to see where do, where do I go with all this? Because I live in an area where there are a lot of people who are over 65. And, I mean, I'm not in a community, I'm just living on, you know, in this area of North Carolina. But what I've noticed is as people age, it kind of, I notice that it seems that certainly not this group at all, but a little bit less curious as they get older. I don't know if others, if others of you have seen that or not. So I kind of keep myself away from it because I don't, it's satisfying to me to talk about something and other people don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. That happens. I mean, I think we are sort of an exception, getting older and getting ever more curious. <laughs> yeah. And I like what you said with the awe. I, I understood not long ago that it's really the awe is the power which which um, brings you in a state of consciousness which allows you to be how can I say that? Grateful also. You, you have written gratitude, no? That's uh, for me when I have this awe moments or also times, and when I remember, like yesterday, I saw the sun on the on the leaves. They are now brownish golden. No? That's like being fueled with new energy. That is like 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 life and and i think when i'm in these uh, uh, situations i think i didn't really live before without this quality of 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 perception you know when you look only around ah, oh, this is uh, and, uh, and this doesn't work and this doesn't work and this yeah that works so that's a, a whole dimension is missing and i think with awe is the the best description what what is missing and for me, from our gratitude comes immediately. Uh, it's a, it's a, a necessary consequence. <laughs> yeah, are you, you sorry? Are you heard of neuroscientist Lisa Feldman Barrett? Is anybody familiar with her? No. She actually is recognized as one of the finest, most refined, knowledgeable neuroscientists on the planet, and her laboratory huge and they've actually the roots that they've done is that those three qualities that we've been talking about compassion gratitude gratitude and um awe that they create being in the present moment the combination of the three and that's what her research is you can see it's in a book called seven and a half um qualities of the brain and it's interesting to see what the one half is Lisa Feldman Barrett, and it's it's a little book, you know, and she just she, there's some she has a number of, um, I guess we'd call it podcast people interviewing her, and you can get the information that way too, mm -hmm. and she's just she just lights up. Can you write it also in the chat, please? You so know, I've never put something in. The chat. So um, this is new for me. So what do I do with my Lisa Feldman Barrett? Yeah, you'll just write it. Yeah, I did. as she was speaking about the all, where you leave, you remind me of two things of Leonardo da Vinci. He was also, I, I read a book about him where he was also so curious about the reflection of the sun on, on the leaves and the different greens and browns and yellows. And that made him extremely curious about the mystery of life and how it led to some of his discoveries. But I had experience like that many years ago. I used to go and walk around the river in Johannesburg where I stayed when I was not traveling at that time. I was still traveling a lot. And 
I would go early morning before the sun really comes up. And I was always doing some energetic movement things there next to the river. And, and one morning a gentleman came and I was always fascinated by the dew drops on the, on the grass because it's very luscious and green next to the river. And I was on a sandbank and I was doing my moves and things. And this man came from behind and he said to me, what am I doing? And I explained to him and then he took me to the grass and he said, and, and he asked me what do I see? And I told him what I used to see. I, I could see the network of life between the different grass things and everything else. It was incredible. It was like I could see something more than just looking at the grass. Mm -hmm. And then he explained to me why I was able to, because he did apparently a lot of research about that in his own life, in his own life's work, that the dew drops, if you drink them before the sun comes up, you immediately into ingesting higher consciousness, number one. And the second thing he said is because I it that time before the sun cut rises, so it's dusk, it's before it really rises, is when it's part we you know, I know it from other parts of reality, that's when we're really perceptive, a lot more perceptive to our consciousness than any other time during the day, and then again at, at in the evening, just before when the sun goes down. But it was incredible that I could see the whole network of 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 life and i couldn't see it at other times of the day i could only see it in that time frame before the sun came up the moment the sun stuck its head over the treetops from the other side it would disappear and i was fascinated by this so i i, I love to be there because i really felt alive when i was there and now when you said oh that's what i experienced while i was there complete awe and deeply connected to everything that is, and I felt, feel it on my body again as well. Thank you, ladies. It's wonderful of you reminding me today on the first about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I was the the um, phrase "beginner's mind" came to me as we were talking about remaining curious and open and. Um, as we age, not closing off to new things, but remaining curious. Um, so that's what the beginner's mind is uh, encourages you to do. Thank you. I like it's a nice for the beginner's mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when you say remain uh, curious to what is coming. I have the habit to be very, um, let's say, fearful of the upcoming AI uh, thing and so on. No, And I lately heard, but it's in German, an interview with a person of the 68th movement uh, in Germany. And he has done a complete spiritual path. And um, he says, that gave me a new perspective on AI and everything. He said, these are the intermittent technologies which are bringing people, uh, us, humanity, into the real connection. This is an intermediate for connecting us still by technology, but uh, uh, later we won't need this anymore, but be really connected in a later phase of spiritual development. And uh, But he said, yes, you can abuse everything. You know, and it is abused. Internet and everything is is abused, but it was born as the genuine idea to connect people. The internet, without grabbing money from this and that, you know. So it opened a little my mind and say, yes, maybe we only need to be attentive of the abuse of these uh, means and use them in a in a mindful way ourselves, and be mindful if somebody else. Uh, tries to, how do you say, also pay it or something, <laughs> the, uh, this wonderful tool. Because if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't be together. We would never have met. So keep up the good things. Yeah. What What is the 68 movement in Germany? What does that refer to? 
uh, to the beginning of the green movement. It is it, like Woodstock in America, you know, the the beginning of they, they they took the drugs and had a spiritual experiences and didn't know what what it was, but it sort of. He said, "In four, there were four consequences possible. Somebody ended up in drugs. Somebody uh, went into spirituality. Somebody just uh, ignored everything. Or you know, there were several ways. And he obviously entered into spirituality. And he's eighty-three now, or something. And um, was very interesting. But I, it's useless that I give you the the link because <laughs> it's it's in German." It refers to 1968, that period of time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. The beginning of, of, of the green movement, no? The, the green uh, movement and the green uh, stage of, of development. It started out there because of the openness and curiosity of people, no? Mm -hmm. and then also this was abused by, you know, let's say, uh, the money grabbing parts of the world. So, and the, most of them, uh, of the people who were very um, important then, either they became very, very bourgeois, uh, or, or they didn't, many of them even couldn't cope with life, and they are still hippies with 80-something, you know? So there were many ways how to deal with this opening and we have to think about when we live in this opening times how to deal with this because there are many 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 ways where we could go and most of them are limiting i would say so would you say the underbelly of all of that is the capacity to stay very curious mm -hmm. about ourselves and others but that yeah. makes all possible yeah. And what concerns me a little bit, I guess, is, well, maybe it's where I live, but the political division that we have as we come into this year, that's basically lacking curiosity, isn't it? I mean, I don't mean to bring in the negative, but my God, I just wish we could just be curious about who's there, not necessarily what their beliefs are, because beliefs mm -hmm. are are just so very different from what we're, from a spiritual perspective anyway. For, for political life, I have my own uh, ideas that for me, it, it needs to be changed completely as mm -hmm. it is now with parties and everything. There is no democracy in no place of the world anymore. That's more, you know, going in a very bad direction. And so for me, it's useless that you uh, be preoccupied who will be the president. He is just, uh, you know, he tries to get whoever it is, get as much money as they get, as much power as they have, but they are not um, the real, the people who really lead the world. <laughs> not, not really. So we, we, we should redo... <laughs> our political systems from scratch if we want democracy. If we are happy with being ruled by idiots, then it's fine. I mean, and the the situation in Germany, at the government, they are only idiots, but I think in whole Europe. So we are in a strange situation. <laughs> but maybe it brings about that we invent something else, what uh, community uh, governance could be, you know, what it's now. It's they use our our money, tax money for paying wars. I mean, who wants that? Yeah, I was recently in a session about um, people you might know them about. They do things about democracy, especially in the USA, and the the organizations called the ICC dot org. Um, and I attended a few of these sessions in the last two months, and it it was clear that whatever that was beautiful at the time that it came into the world, but it's like you say, it's no longer relevant. We need something else. And the last session, there was an amazing woman who spoke about this, where she also said, we now need to really think outside of the box and be curious, yes, of what else is possible now, because those structures don't work anymore. 
we need something different. And then they were sharing about this incredible project that happened in 2019. And then COVID happened, but the, the after effects of it was just so extraordinary where the whole community, everybody just came together and they just did amazing things. What, what is possible when everybody comes together like that beyond the structures, beyond the political structures. And that gave me some hope because even though that was quite a while back that that happened, but the way it was done was just incredible. But it, it did give me the sense that these structures are breaking down because they don't all work. And we don't have, to, I totally agree with you, we don't have democracy anywhere in the world anymore at all. So we need something new for whatever that might be. And it will most probably be a evolved state of, of what is necessary for us to govern ourselves and self-govern and things like that. And obviously to get there is going to take some time, but at least there's, there are undercurrents happening that shows there's possibilities for that to happen. Well, I've just seen, I was part of, uh, I'm part of a leadership group in South Africa. I haven't really participated actively in it, but these people are all doing amazing things on a community level, just amazing things. And with the Gaza thing happening now, it's extraordinary how they all just fight because some are for Israel, some are for Palestine. And it, it was just very sad because in, in South Africa, they're doing amazing work. But when they are faced with a global issue like that, it's like they fear, they're so full of fear and so powerless. It was just really sad. To, I didn't participate because I don't want to be in such a space. But it was really sad that um, we have, and I realized also that I all personally always had the dilemma because I look at, in, at life in a different way than a lot of the other people that were in my, in my sphere of contact where they think local, regional, global. But I clearly could see now with them, they focus on local first, and then you are protected, you're in your little bubble. And you, you can't really see the bigger picture of everything is connected and interconnected. And um, that's why they had such, such terrible, distraught fights about what's happening in the Middle East because they only focused locally, but it was never part of the bigger picture. And I think as far as democracy is concerned, this democracy that's also happening, that we can see there are different expressions of the democracy in the world currently, but they all are breaking down and we need something else. And nonetheless, I think a new uh, governance structure needs to start on the community level, uh, not not necessarily locally, but small, and then go up, because from up, up down, we have fascism, and, you know, together with economy, uh, powerful uh, institutions, which, which is now at the moment, and um, we have to, to, to create something else from them, they don't do that, because they would lose, uh, so we have to it is difficult, but I think that's the only way to do it because um, it's obsolete. What what uh, it's also there a cycle is closing, in my opinion, a cycle of yeah, first tier we could say in integral. <laughs> first tier is closing slowly, you know. So we have to jump into something else but not expect that the others do. And and everybody of us needs to do what they can do. And I think my, I hope that this is what I I meant to do, that I try to create a community qua, uh, qua, this is Italian, here. So, and, and from there, and you know, connect with others. Ah, that's also the thing, when it's too local and they are not connected with other groups, no, they're now like, like, uh, fu uh, fungus they are uh, popping up everywhere these uh, these communities so we need to connect um, with uh, with each other and try to find and there will be people who are good in organizing and in in in, uh, in creating let's say theories or how we can do that that's not me i will be more on the practical part so i wonder what you would 
uh, think that your role is in bringing about a new way of organizing society? I can tell you from an Enneagram point of view where I tend to see the potential that we could deal with it. The, the places where I've studied um, at the Enneagram Institute in New York for four years, it, my teacher, who I think is probably the most knowledgeable on the planet, that about 60% of us are type six. Hmm. And what I've noticed during the political, the people who are out fighting on this, you know, screaming at each other, they're sixes because the other numbers don't have that default in the same way. And so if we could just help them come, six could be one for this political belief or that political belief, that they're fear-based. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense, but if there could be, but that would be just like climbing a mountain to get because these people, my brother is one of them, absolutely belief um, driven. And I, that's, I guess, in a way, it helps me, even though it sounds negative, me feel great compassion for them. Yeah. I can understand that too. Yeah. And that explains if six is uh, sixty percent of sixes, that explains also why our governments, uh, which were fear mongering, uh, especially in the last years, but also before all the time with the crisis, they they uh, in, instead of calming us uh, down, they make the fear bigger. Why this works so well, you know, you can then emotionalize the people in their. Um, in their um, emotion, which is more normal for them, like fear, and then everything happens, you know. And normally, yeah. the reaction with fear is or, or flee or, or fight, no? Yes, exactly. And I think the, the logic behind it is anthropological. Over the millions of years, as we evolved, we needed the, the strengths of the six to evolve, to work in community, mm -hmm. to support each other. So that's why there would maybe numbers in that because they're the ones that do the basic work that keeps the culture functioning, bringing the groceries, you know, the grocery stores and electricians, people, the, the workers for the most part, who keep us, the, who keep us functioning. So from an anthropological point of view, it makes sense. But how to, to open that up to a loving place, I think is a, just a question. You guys, I'm going to have to get going. It's after the hour, so maybe we can check out. Okay, yes. Okay. Are you guys ready or not? Yeah. Sure, cool. thanks. Okay. Cool. Had a good good talk today. Lots of Lots of creative ideas. Really nice. Um, we're going to meet again in two weeks, right? Perfect. Good. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. How is Monia? Good. She's okay? Okay, good. All righty. Okay. Thank you, everybody, today. I'm going to sign off. Love you all. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Christine. And we also can do a check out. I found it amazing where we went today. <laughs> we did this whole circle. <laughs> we didn't close it yet, but we are about to close it. Now, Christine, you are completely frozen. Before you sometimes were, uh, she was hanging a little bit. Anyway, that was my check out. And thank you that you averted me that we had the meeting. So. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Also, thank you. I really enjoyed being with you again. And also for all the beautiful reminders, also things that I have to be curious about and explore and for all the sharing. Lots yeah. of love. And have a nice time in the warm country. I, have I will. Yeah, in the furnace. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye.